brothers will reign on the earth. If it's right, Go ahead. Whosoever thereof resisteth the power, whosoever does not abide by the laws of the land, read, resisteth the ordinance of God. Because God was the one who set up the power structure that's here right now. So this is what we have to deal with right now. But guess what? When Christ comes back, all of that is going to change. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. How, what's the reason why all that is going to change? Because this earth will be done away with, with thermal nuclear destruction. This land, two-thirds of you, you Jamaicans that don't want to keep God's commandments, you will die by thermal nuclear destruction. The one-third of you brothers that do repent, this is what the new order and the new government will be on the earth. There will be a new government on the earth, which will consist of 144,000 Israelite men, 12,000 from each tribe. The new government that will be set up when God makes the new heaven and the new earth, 12,000 of those men in the Israelite government are going to be from the tribe of Benjamin. Do you want to be one of them? Well, you better keep God's commandments and live. Read. Revelation 5 and 10. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. Read. It has made us unto our God kings and priests. It says has made us unto our God what? Kings and priests. God is going to make the Israelite man kings and priests. And then what are we going to do? And we shall reign on the earth. You see that? It says we shall reign on the earth. So when a new government is established, that's where men will lead of the nation of Israel under Christ. All the other nations are going to bow down to us because we're going to be the ruling power. So you got to keep God's commandments from now until then. Understand that. What's your question, sis? Yes. Yes. You're looking at him right now. We're the leaders that's going to teach you right. Let's get Jeremiah 3 15. Okay, I'll go back to that in just a second. The real leaders are supposed to be teaching you something. I'm going to show you this. Jeremiah 3, 3 and 15, please. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. When God says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, God is saying, I'm going to give you leaders according to God's ways of doing things. The leaders that we have right now, they're not operating by God's ways of doing things. That's why it says, I will do what? I will give you pastors according to my heart, Read. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You see that? That's the reason why we're impoverished as a community now. Because our leaders are not feeding us with knowledge and understanding. They'll give you welfare all day, they're not giving you knowledge and understanding. What is the knowledge that you're supposed to be fed with? Our people are starving for knowledge here. What is the knowledge we're supposed to be fed with? Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7, okay? The leaders that are set up uh, in this community right now, they're following after the ways of the so-called white man. But God's true leaders, they're not going to follow after the ways of the white man. They're going to follow behind the Heavenly Father, who's a black man. Malachi 2 and 7. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. This is the job of your pastors in your Christian churches, the jobs of the leaders in your community. This is their place. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Read this. And they... It says the priest's lips should do what? Should keep knowledge. That's what y'all have to understand. The reason why a lot of you go to the Christian church is because you do evil. From Monday to Saturday, then you pop in on Sunday to hear a feel-good message. The job of the pastor is not to give you a feel-good message. The job of the pastor is to teach you knowledge. It says what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. Read that from the top. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. What's the pastor supposed to be teaching you? What is he supposed to be teaching you? The, read this again. And they should seek the law at his mouth. What's supposed to be coming out of the mouth of the pastor? The laws. If your pastor's not teaching you God's laws, he's not your pastor. He's not the rightful leader that God has delivered on the earth to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Your Christian pastors in this land of Jamaica, they are not ordained of God. That's right. They are ordained of Satan. That's right. And a lot of y'all don't realize that. Let's get Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 11 to finish the answer on his sister's question about what about those from the times of old that weren't taught the right way. I'm going to show you this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Right, 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 right. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread, yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, 
nor yet favor to the man of skill. But time and chance happeneth to all them, excuse me, but time and chance happeneth to them all. You see that? Because time, every brother and every sister of our nation will be taught the right way according to the Bible. The question is, are you going to keep God's commandments when God calls you into his election? Many are called, few are chosen, okay? We've lived hundreds of years in ignorance. We've been destroyed for a lack of knowledge. God is sending prophets on the earth right now for you to hear the knowledge and the instructions. Don't worry, sister. All of our brothers and sisters will be they will receive God's word. The question is, when you hear God's word, are you going to apply it and keep his commandments? Isaiah 30 and 20. Time and chance will be given to all men and women, but you must apply God's words. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. And I thought the Lord give you the bread of adversary. It says, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, right here we're getting the bread of adversity. We're the last high of the first fire. We're the main ones with the high diabetes, the gout, high blood pressure. We're the ones with the bad, broken family structure, highest murder. Jamaica has the seventh highest murder rate in all the world. That's the bread of adversity. But even though we've been given the bread of adversity, God promised us this, right? And the water of affliction. Go ahead, because we are an afflicted people. We were afflicted in physical slavery. We're still afflicted right now in mental slavery. That's right. Economically, you're enslaved as a people. In every single way, you're enslaved as a people. Read this. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. You see that? Because God is sending back his true teachers and his true prophets this day. And you're looking at them. We're the true prophets. We're the true teachers. You know how? Because everything we're saying is coming out of God's word. That's right. And we ain't not showing for a dollar yet. You know why? Because we're not here for your money. That's we're right. here for your repentance. That's right. We're not here to give. See, don't you, you get duped by Christian pastors that come and give you a sandwich. Christ said, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what we're going to be with. Read this again. Top, from the top. And though the Lord give you bread of adversary. Adversity. Ad read. Adversity. Read. And the water of affliction. Come on. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into corners anymore. Because we're not going to be hidden now. Now y'all don't got no excuse. You know that you got to keep God's laws. The teachers have come to reveal that to you. You know that you got to teach God's laws, sis. I mean, you know that you have to keep God's laws. The prophets have come and now reveal it to you. They're not hidden in a corner no more. You're looking at it right now with your very eyes. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. You see that? You're looking at your teachers right now. Let me teach you this. 1 Corinthians 11. This goes back to the woman's place. God is a God of order. He's very clear. God wants you sisters to do something when you pray and you prophesy. I want you to understand this. You got what I want? Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. God is showing you the order structure right here. He says that there's God, there's Christ, there's man, there's woman. The head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of every woman is the man. Your head, sister, is the man. You are not equal to the man. You're not to usurp authority over the man. You're not to run the man. Your job is to be under the man and supporting that man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is the Heavenly Father. There is an order structure set up. Okay, read on. And verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Meaning if you, a lot of times, brothers, when the word of God is going out or when you're talking about God's words, a lot of times brothers will have their hat on. The Bible says what? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Because according to God's words, a man is not to have his head covered while the word of God is being brought forth. Whether he's praying, talking about the Bible, anything of the sort, a man is not to have his head covered when God's word goes forth. Read. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her, her, with her head uncovered. Now it jumps to the woman now. Remember, for the man has said, if a man has his head covered while the word of God is being brought forth, he's the son of his head. Now for the woman, is a difference, read. Dishonoreth her head. 
Every woman. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonored her head. So you see that? Your job as a woman of God is when the word of God is coming up, you're supposed to have your head covered. You understand that? You understand that? There are many ways a woman can prophesy, but it's not to lead the congregation. It is not to teach the congregation. Titus 2, please. I'll give you an example of women prophesying. Prophesying is anything that's done as a service to God. Read this. But before we go there, did you get what the scripture just said about a woman? If she deals with God's word, she's not supposed to have her head uncovered. Did you understand that? So what you going to do? Okay, all praises. Now, now that you've acknowledged you'll humble down to the word of God, I'm going to show you an example of women prophesying in the, in the order that God has set. Okay? Understand. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. Because remember now, when we read in Timothy earlier, remember when it said that a woman is uh, to be in silence when the word of God is coming forth? He said, I suffer not a woman to teach. So it's going to show you how a woman will prophesy right here in the book of Titus. Read. Book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The age woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Come on. Not false accusers. Come on. Not given to much wine. Come on. Teachers of good things. You see that? It says teachers of good things. How does the woman teach? She teaches the example to the younger women. She teaches the children. That's how the community is set up. Read it from the top. This is the woman's place according to God's word, sister. God does everything in order. God says, I'm going to have the man teach the congregation. This is the job of the woman. Read this. The book of Titus, chapter 2, and verse 3. Come on. The aged woman, likewise. Meaning you older sisters out here. The older sisters, you have to be an example to the younger sisters. To do what? That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. You see that? The, the woman's behavior is not to be an independent woman. It's not to be the head of the household. All those things are poor behaviors. That's an ungodly behavior. A lot of these women that you see, like your Beyonce's and all of that, that's an ungodly behavior. Your job is to teach the younger women how to have a godly behavior. Go ahead. Not false accusers. A godly woman is not a false accuser. You know how a lot of women do false accusers? Through gossip, through backbiting, through tailbearing, slandering other people's name. That's an ungodly behavior. Go ahead. Not given to much wine. Another way that women can be ungodly is if they drink to drunkenness and they're given to much wine. You let your daughters go out to the club and all of that, do this and that, two for one drink specials. That is an ungodly behavior. Because guess what? It'll be those exact same women they'll get real drunk, a man will dominate and take over. Might rape them. That's an ungodly behavior. A woman's not supposed to do that. Read on. I'll get you in just a second, brother. Teachers of good things. The teachers of good things is supposed to be teaching younger women how to conduct themselves in godliness. How a woman should dress is in the Bible. A woman's supposed to be teaching that to the younger women. Not just through words, either through her example. Because that's the thing about a lot of people in our community. You talk a good one, but your example has to be the teacher. You see that? Because a, a young child, right? A young child, if it doesn't understand the language you're speaking, it still can model after your example. You see what I'm saying? The young child's going to do what you do. That's why you have to be a proper example. Go ahead. Verse 4. That they, that they may teach the young women to be sober. To love their husband. You see that? Because younger women, they have to be taught how to love their husbands. See that? A lot of younger women in our community, they don't know how to love a husband because they've never been taught. A lot of these younger women, they don't know how to cook for a man. They don't know how to talk to a man. They don't know these things. That's the reason why there's no marriages in our community. The older women are supposed to teach the younger women how to conduct yourself as a woman not to take a man's place for a woman to be a woman when a man is a man and a woman is a woman that's when everything is in harmony with the heavenly father you understand read that again verse 4 that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children because you have to learn how to take care of your kids the proper way a lot of times the younger women you'll let your grandmother take care of your child You'll let your grandfather take care of the child, and you'll be out at the uh, at the club, out at the party, doing all that. That's out of order. You're not supposed to do that. 
that's not godly behavior. Do you understand that? Godly behavior is the older woman teaching the younger woman from the youth up, this is how you're supposed to take care of the kids. This is how you're supposed to be patient with them. This is how you're supposed to discipline them. All those things you have to be taught. You don't know it on your own. Just like when it comes to this Bible. You don't know the will of God on your own. You have to be taught. We're your teachers. Read. Verse 5. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Where's the woman supposed to be? Because uh, the sister's question earlier, remember? Where are the women? The women's job is supposed to be where? Keepers at home. You see that? It's not supposed to be out at all given times of night. It's supposed to be at home getting the place ready for her husband. Read on. Good obedient to their own husbands. You see that? That's the job of the sisters. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.